One of my favorite pieces I've featured to date is the super cheap Loris Titanium Field Watch that I reviewed on the channel last year. Ever since, I've been keeping an eye out for something equally as cool, especially in those lower price brackets. A couple of months back, I pulled the trigger on a similarly styled matte grey titanium piece which had the same case design as the former. While the dial was quite nice, it missed the mark. For whatever reason, possibly the bland colour scheme, I felt it lacked any panache. I was after something with more pop to it. Then, out of nowhere, I discovered that Loris had released a new line of mechanical wristwatches, the first in recent memory from that brand. And it got me thinking. Like the Pulsar sub-brand, Loris is an offshoot of Seiko, generally targeting the lower end of the market. Effectively, they're Seikos with a different stamp on them. Therefore, how would one of these automatics stack up versus a Seiko 5? After all, that's Seiko's entry-level automatic lineup, and on paper, these Loris watches appear to be the same sort of thing. Of course, we don't like speculation here at Ben's Watch Club. I like to get my paws on the real thing. Thanks to Amazon for covering the cost of this RL 439AX9, which looked pretty unusual indeed from the stock images. At £105 at the time of recording, it's also comparatively priced to most Seiko 5s here in the UK. Internationally, prices may vary. I'll leave an affiliate link in the description in case you want to check it out yourself. The first thing I want to look at is the dial. You see, the product shots showcased a weird ridge texture and a bright green gold colour scheme that certainly stands out from the competition. In person, it's just as interesting. This is about the most intricately designed dial I've come across on a £100 automatic watch, alongside the likes of the SNK361 with its array of microscopic fives. This Loris houses a finely ribbed ring that cuts through the hour markers and a vertically woven selection of engravings throughout. Due to the matte finish, it doesn't particularly glisten, though it provides a unique look nonetheless. The indexes, on the other hand, are rather standard. Each is spear tip shaped with a basic glossy finish on each side. The alignment is altogether on point, something that can't be said for too many Seiko 5 watches. This high shine surface is replicated on the hands, with the Dauphine handset stretching out to the appropriate markers at the circumference. While these look good, you'll notice that towards the central stem, there is some visible warping, which is exacerbated by the reflective material. The text is clear and concise, with only the brand name, movement type, and water resistance mentioned. While all quite neat and easily readable, it seems bizarre that each is in a different font style. When including the date window, that's four fonts for only four areas. There's just no need for that inconsistency across so few words. Given the large sizing, the date window is also situated closer to the middle than maybe ideal, though I think it's still a rather good looking watch overall. It's probably not quite something I'd wear, but I can appreciate why others might like it. I was unable to track down some of the alternative colors, which I think look a little bit better. Given that many Loris watches hover at around 40 millimeters, I expected their automatic offerings to come in at comparable widths. However, both are larger at around 42 millimeters. As you can see from the wrist shot, this one is too big for my wrist. This model has a 12.1 millimeter thickness and a rather long 49 mil lug to lug length. The bracelet end links are completely flexible, which does make the watch more wearable than the dimensions may indicate, though this watch will still generally fit larger wrists the best. As expected, this is a full stainless steel case, with a high polished bezel, polished flanks, and brushing on the upper. The quality is essentially on par with older Seiko 5s I've experienced to date, though I'm yet to review any of the pricier newer models that were recently released. It's basic, but does feel substantial and durable, albeit prone to scratches. Unlike a Seiko 5, the crown isn't recessed into the case. Instead, it sits externally at the regular three o'clock position. It's unsigned, but is grippy enough, Functionally, it suffices, though you can wiggle it a little without moving the hands much, making fine adjustments a tad difficult. A common pet peeve I found before with this movement. One of my favorite parts of this watch is, surprisingly, the case rear. This is screwed down and advertises a five bar water resistance upon it, which is fairly good for this style of watch. And honestly, I think it could probably withstand more than that from the secure feeling alone. This is higher than most of the similarly styled Seiko 5 models, which tend to offer the basic three bar splash resistance. Under the hood, you can see the entry level automatic movement within. The mechanism is labeled as a Y676C, which to my understanding is simply a rebadged Seiko 7S26C. The same as is found in many existing Seiko 5 watches. Given its presence in this newly released watch, we can assume Seiko and Loris must have a large number of these now discontinued movements in reserve. 
If you're familiar with the 7S26, you'll know that this movement is durable but basic, with no hacking or hand winding capabilities, meaning you'll have to manually wear or rotate it to charge the power reserve. For £100, it's not bad, but we have seen more modern alternatives making their way into comparably priced watches elsewhere. Nevertheless, it's still better than the ever-present $2 Miyoto Quartz options that we've looked at in other £100 plus watches. Even though it's too large for me, the watch is actually still comfy on the wrist and doesn't wobble about at all once the bracelet has been sufficiently adjusted. On the subject of the bracelet, well, look at the title of the video. This is essentially a rebadged Seiko 5, so you should know what to expect. Indeed, it's a basic folded link steel band with a rudimentary pressed clasp that does integrate quite well with the case, but won't be winning any awards. To be fair, it's probably in line with some of the slightly better Seiko 5 bracelets, such as that fitted to the SNKL45, and does have a reasonable three micro adjustment holes. Though I imagine potential tugging for the hairier of you out there could necessitate a strap replacement further down the line. The packaging provided with this watch was a little basic in comparison to your average cheap Seiko, but the piece does still feature the same mineral crystal over the dial, which is the average material at this price point, though not industry leading. In many ways, this is uh, pretty much a Seiko 5. The build is very similar, the design is unique, and if anything, the quality control seems slightly better. Of course, if you decided to resell the watch in the future, it's unlikely it would fetch quite as much of the original price back, given that Loris name on the dial as opposed to Seiko. For me, the sizing alone makes it a no-go compared to some of the smaller Seiko 5s that I've covered before, which fit this skinny thing much better. Nevertheless, if you've wanted a Seiko 5 for a while, but have been previously put off by the small cases, this Loris could be a way of effectively trying one in a larger package. It's certainly got a unique look too, but in hindsight, I think the blue dial option on their website looks better, even if it is harder to track down. If you want to grab one of these, there's an affiliate link down below. The other current Loris Automatic is more like a pilot's watch style. I'll link another YouTuber's review, which I'll swap out if I ever end up reviewing it. If you enjoyed, consider subscribing, and I'll see you next time.